today we're going to be talking about some of the major swine breeds that you'll see around here. So we're going to start with the Berkshire. And these guys are from Berkshire County, England. And they were actually the first registered boar that was bred by Queen Victoria. And the first breed that included pedigrees in their herd book. So they're recognizable because they have this short upturned snout. And remember that shire suffix on the end means that their ears are also erect. They're standing up. Um, they are black with white legs, at least partially. You'll have white markings coming up. They also tend to have white spots on their face and on their tail. And actually, if more than 10% of their body is white, they can't be registered as purebred Berkshires. They are a terminal breed, so they're the ideal meat-type hog. They have a really high-grade carcass, and it's prized for its juiciness, flavor, and tenderness. They tend to have really heavily marbled meat with a high fat content. And because of that, they are now marketed as one of those heritage breeds that, uh, when you get it in a restaurant, can have quite a high price tag that comes with it. They did gradually become less popular since the 1960s because consumer demand leaned towards wanting leaner pork. And this is a very fatty breed of pork. Um, and also breeding companies started preferring white skinned breeds. So some cuts of meat are actually sold with the skin on and people are kind of skeeved out if the skin was a darker color. So because of that, they weren't quite as popular. However, lately they've seen a real resurgence and they are usually marketed as that heritage pork. This is a highly coveted meat, especially in Japan, where it's marketed as black pork or kirobuta. And it's an expensive kind of pork version of the Wagyu beef. Um, and in this case, they're really preferring these Berkshires that are raised in England, even over the U.S. Berkshires. So if you remember the piglets that we had last year um, in 2020, um, those piglets were Berkshire piglets, and you might have recognized those. Next, we have the Chester White. We currently have a Chester White gilt on campus. That's Charlotte. Um, so the Chester White is named after Chester County in Pennsylvania, which is where it was originally bred. They are related to the Yorkshires that we're going to talk about later. They are really large in size. They have that white color um, and small droopy ears. So you can see we don't have that Shire prefix on the end, and these tend to kind of flop right down. Um, these guys can have blue spots or freckles somewhere on their body, um, but they must be at least 95% white to really be considered Chester Whites. They are a maternal breed, so they are known for excellent mothering abilities. Um, their piglets do grow pretty rapidly, but they're known for having really sound conformation. So this is really great breed if you're trying to improve your breeding stock, and that's exactly why we bought Charlotte. They also have a really good conception rate. It's easy for them to give birth and they're 12% more likely to have successful pregnancies than other breeds. They also have higher survival rates for their piglets and they tend to have larger litters as well. So great breeding um, stock and then you can also get fairly rapid growth out of them for the market. The next kind is a Duroc, which is what our boar Big Red is. And Durocs were first called Duroc Jerseys because they come from the Jersey Reds that were bred in New Jersey. Um, the Red Durocs of New York were also bred into this line along with the Red Berkshires of Connecticut. These are known as a terminal breed. So these are meat hogs. They are known for having a really high carcass yield and outstanding muscle quality and for being fast growing. The preferred color in the industry is this medium cherry red color, but you can get a lot of variations from a lighter to a darker red. Generally, they are a little bit darker in color on the top, and then they have this golden reddish underside. They also have drooby ears and a thicker coat than other breeds, which helps them be a little bit better suited for cold winters. Um, it does also shed in the summer so that they can withstand high temperatures. So these guys really thrive in facilities with outdoor access because their bodies are really kind of built for that. And these are the least aggressive of all commercial breeds as well. So you can maybe see why we would have a boar of this particular type since it's a great meat pig. 
and why we might want to breed it with the Chester White, like Charlotte, um, since that's a really good um, muthering pig. And actually, before I forget, our other breeding sow at the moment, Carrie, she is also a Berkshire. So she's a little bit smaller in the body than that Chester White of Charlotte. Charlotte's not quite full grown, but when she is, she will be bigger than Carrie because that is just the bigger size breed. The next type we've also had on campus many times, and this is the Hampshire. So these guys are really nice and easy to recognize because they have that white stripe or belt. So a lot like we had the belted Galloways with the beef cattle, this has that same pattern where it's black on the front and back and it's got that white belt going down the middle. This is also a terminal breed. So a market hog that's known for excellent muscling and it is the number one leader in high quality carcasses. So you're gonna get really efficient growth out of this pig and it's used heavily in crossbreeding to add muscling and carcass quality to other breeds. It is also one of the smaller breeds. Um, so not gonna be quite as big as a Chester White or a Duroc. They tend to have a long straight face. So that's one way other than obviously the belt that you're gonna tell them apart from the Berkshires. And then they, their belt is usually at least part of the shoulder, so it can be a little bit further back than what you see here, um, and it goes around that abdominal area. They're really fast growing, really hardy, and they have nice lean meat. And these guys tend to do really well in confinement facilities, not as well outside. This next breed was actually bred purely for looks and not as much for its actual purpose. So the Hereford was bred to look like Hereford cattle. Um, and the registry was actually sponsored by the Hereford cattlemen to try to increase the popularity of both the pig and cattle breed. So it is actually a cross of Duroc, Chester White, and Poland China. And it originated in the 1920s in Nebraska. They have droopy ears, which they get, of course, from all of those breeds. Um, and their face should be at least two thirds white as well as they must have at least three white legs to be considered Herefords. The white has to be all below the shoulders and the body should be at least two thirds red overall and about one third white. These guys are really adaptable to a wide variety of climates and facilities um, and they're quiet, they're docile, they're a great choice for a 4-H project in part because they're so fast growing and they're fairly easy to train. Our next breed is another white pig. Um, this is the land race, or more correctly, its full name would be the American land race. Uh, it is a Danish breed that comes from a local land race breed in Denmark. And really all that a land race breed means is it was bred locally in a small area. So depending on where you go, even though they may be still called land race breeds, they might have different genetics if they're coming from different areas. Land races in the U.S. are known as a very maternal breed. They make excellent mothers. They produce more milk and larger piglets. Um, and they're known as America's sow herd because they're so often used for crossbreeding to get some of those better mothering abilities into the um, breed stock. So they're medium in size. They have meaty carcasses and really high feed efficiency. They have white hair and pinkish white skin. And if they actually do have a lot of dark areas like this particular one down here, that would actually disqualify them from being registered as pure red land race. They're long in their bodies, deep sided, and they have very flat backs compared to most pigs. And they have a straight snout that comes slightly up right at the end and a trim jowl, meaning they're not very thick in this area. They tend to have uh, a nice little chin there. Um, and they have large droopy ears, and they're very difficult sometimes to tell apart from the Chester Whites because of that. But if we go back and take a look at the Chester White, you see how these really droop downwards. Whereas if you look at the Landrace, they tend to go more forwards, and they have kind of a point to them. So they're kind of pointing forward and down. Um, but otherwise, they can be very difficult to tell apart. So you want to make sure that you know the other qualities that they have. Next on our list is the pea train um, or pie train. And that this is a Belgian origin breed of medium size. 
They tend to have much shorter legs and a stockier build than some of our other breeds that we've looked at. They are a terminal breed. They offer a really high yield of lean meat, and they're one of the most muscular pigs in the world. The trouble with P trains is that the purebreds are prone to something called porcine stress syndrome, which is a neuromuscular disorder caused by a recessive gene that can cause an excess amount of calcium when the pig is stressed to build up in the body. And that causes a dangerously high metabolic rate, which can lead to mus muscle tremors and trouble breathing and often results in the sudden death of the hog. So obviously that's not a good trait to pass along. And because of that, Petra and hogs are usually crossbred despite all of their good qualities. Number 38 is the Poland, which is also known as the Poland China. This was developed in the Ohio, Ohio River Valley in the 1800s. And it's a terminal breed known for having good length in the body, thick ham areas, and desirable carcass. It's very similar to the Berkshire. So it's all black with some white on the legs, face, and tail area. Um, and the key difference between the Poland and the Berkshire is the Poland has these droopy ears. So that's how you're gonna be able to tell them apart. They are allowed to have more than six white points, but they must have these six white points to be registered Poland. So the legs, the tail, and the snout area. They're highly adaptable to different types of living environments, and they're known for having really high sow longevity, meaning you can breed them for more years than your typical pig. Our next breed, the spotted swine, is actually genetically the same breed as Poland China. The only difference is its coat color. So these were originally called spotted Polands. They were also developed in Ohio, and they are a terminal breed. Ideally, they're about 50% black and 50% white, but they do have these spotted areas that tend to have kind of a grayish area around the black spots. And these are hardy pigs. They have really high reproductive efficiency. It can be really hard to tell spotted swine apart from pea trains. The biggest key thing is that they have much longer, leaner bodies than the pea train. And if you look at the pea train, they're a lot kind of fatter and stockier, um, and they have shorter legs than the spotted swine do. Then we have the Tamworth. The Tamworth is one of the oldest breeds. It's actually a descendant of the native wild European hogs. And they come from Ireland, where they're known as the Irish Glazers. Um, these guys are excellent foragers. They're bred to live outside, so that's why they have that thicker fur. And they live mainly off of acorns and oak forests. They're very good at free roaming over many miles and only being brought in once in a while. So easy management. They have this mahogany red color with their pink skin, and they're very slow growing, but they tend to have a higher carcass yield than other breeds because they have really fine bones. This is kind of known as a bacon breed. It produces really fine grained lean bacon. So usually it is produced for that purpose. And lastly, we have the Yorkshire. These guys were developed in York County of England in the 1830s, and they are the most common breed in the US and Canada today. They are a maternal breed and they're actually known as the mother breed because they are now part of so many other breeds. They are long bodied and deep sided with really high carcass quality and erect ears, hence that shire prefix or suffix. Um, and they have what we call a dished face. So you can kind of see how their eyes are almost really flat to their head and then it curves around to, to their snout from there. So that's that dished face. So again, the most popular market breed for a number of reasons. One is they are such good mothers. Two is that they have such good carcass quality. But then in addition to that, these guys have that white skin, which is really highly sought after for meat um, products. So that wraps up your swine breeds. Go ahead and find any information that we didn't go over, and then you'll be all set for your breed quiz at the end of this couple of weeks.